Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Incomplete Guide to Star Sector. We are back among the stars, and we're going to jump right back into it because we were, I don't want to say in the middle of, but we were getting toward the end of some serious exploration out here in this kind of eastward, and I use that term somewhat ironically, sector of the sector <laughs> and we today are going to finish up this exploration and head home now we have a few systems left we have this little dinky one here that probably will be empty we have half a dozen here and we have two here and then this one which i think is also another nope maybe that's a double system i'm not sure what we haven't been there yet but we'll have to go there too and then that'll put us right next to home. So I think we should pretty much just get down to it. Because we have ooh, some cool stuff to find, apparently. No, Nebula. Cool stuff, I say. Yeah, real cool. So there we go. That is one more system cleared. And yet, there is a lot of just sort of jumping in out of systems when you're exploring like this. And you're not going to find, you know... Tons of cool stuff in every system. That's just kind of how it goes. So, patience is definitely the name of the game. Which, I think in this game, patience is definitely always the answer. Hello. Eh, harvested organs, okay. I'm still hoping to find some more of those level 7 officers. I think we found one so far. Let's find out. Yeah, we have one. I don't think we've actually dismissed any of them yet. So, yep. I'd love to find some of those guys. Let's slip on down here. Slide into these DMs. Hello, gas giant. The big ping. I'm going to do one of those myself. Gas baron baron frozen. Alright. Let's do a ping. Get our free stuff. We did spot something down there. On the Mr. Radar. Let's get a sip of Mr. Coffee while we go check this out. What have we got? Domain error probe. All right. There are some defenses here. And yep, they're getting bigger and bigger. I think they cap out eventually. I don't think we see larger than destroyers, but you also notice they're getting a lot more captains, or rather AI cores. So we're going to want to go in a little heavier than you might expect. Let's take in probably you. And we'll fly you. And we'll bring, oh, some of the usual suspects. And these guys. And then probably, uh, let's bring... Oh, I don't know. Let's see how that does. Bearing in mind that everything's going to be suffering on peak performance time. And wow, with our new skills, this ship is really zippy and wobbly. All right, guys. Night night. Yep, I have that Reaper up my sleeve. And let's put that one down. These fights can get a bit tedious, I think, in the long run. Personally, if I had any thoughts on them. Like, yeah, they get to experience, they get you stuff. It is nice distraction, but man, they're very samey after a while. Doink. Hello. Brendo. <laughs> I 
I think I went in a circle around this guy instead of killing it. Smart. Very smart. Okay. Get some stuff. Uh, we are a little bit over. We'll just dump most of that and we'll just keep a little bit. That ought to do. Let's get out of the Corona and do a big ping. And nope, nothing there. Where is that planet? We have two plants out this way. Let's go check for ruins and then we'll be out of here. Ooh, another big system with another gas giant. Um, you know what? Let's pop in here, the gas giant. Get our big ping in Zeta Thalos. And... Okay, kind of a gross place. Nothing particularly interesting here. Yet. We have something, a Domain Era Probe. Okay. Ah, one of you guys again. All right. Let's take you this time instead. Okay. Oh, am I in the wrong one? I am in the wrong one. Oh, no. I took the long-range one. Well, I guess we can try it out. We'll see how it goes. Let's see, I'm on Sabos and I have Harpoons as well. Okay, so I want the Harpoons out, I think. This thing is slow at killing anything, isn't it? Wow. I mean, it's effective, but it's still slow. I think I might want to revisit this ship's design, because, man, I mean, the head maulers are nice in a way, but they shoot way too slow. This is with our buff from the elite ballistic skill. Saw that, buddy. No, oh, you're in trouble. Okay, who's left? A couple of these jokers? Alright. No, would you go kill him, please? No? Alright. I guess I gotta do all this work. Alright, and then you. With the hidden reaper. I see your reaper right there. <laughs> Sitting duck. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like the super low rate of fire on those things. Da da. Yep, definitely gonna have to revisit that build. I mean, maybe it's the most effective build there is for it without going safety overrides, but I just don't know about that. Seems kind of weird. Nope, oh, didn't want that. Just you guys, please. Alright, off we go to the next one.
Well, that would have been a nice world if it had any other planets in the system. But it doesn't. So we're out of here. So here we got something, another Domain Era survey ship location, which means it should be one that we haven't come across yet. Oh, right down here. Okay, cool. Asteroid field, good to know. Well, let's keep looking in the system and see what else we might find here. Here we go. We have a world with some ruins and some people, apparently. And nothing good. Shime. Hey, hey, here we go. We have a probe and a ship. Right in an asteroid field. It is non-functional. That's a nice break, really. Now, the ship might be functional. If it is, it means a bigger battle. Which is somewhat more exciting, I guess. Nope. But we do have a mothership location. That's pretty cool. take a look here and see if we've already been to that one. But again, we shouldn't be getting motherships we haven't we've already been to. Okay, yeah. So we haven't been there yet. But there is a mothership there. Cool. And I can't believe we found zero gates out here. Like, just there aren't any whatsoever. That's pretty wild. Well, let's keep moving then. Ow. Alright, we're in the Okia system. Hey, we finally have our first gate. Wow, my goodness. And something hanging out south of us. I'm gonna check out this desert world first. Blue stars very rarely have worlds with farmland or that are habitable even. It's always fun to find them and just see if there's a place to farm. Not today, apparently. There's that gate off to the right. We'll go scan that in a minute here. Uh, probe, of course. Plenty of volatiles. Not something I really care about, but that's good to know. Alright, let's go check out this gate. Oh, I guess we should double, double tap, of course. Alright, now let's go check out this uh, gate over here. Maybe there'll be some ships around it. Maybe a paragon. Or something. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Well, we're going to scan this gate, but I don't think we're going to travel through it yet, because I still want to hit this one and these two before we go home. So let's do a real quick run of the planets. Actually, we've hit almost all of them except for that one. Yeah, I think we can just head on out to the next place then. All right, let's roll. Oh, and you'll see here, now that the gate's been scanned, by the way, that it now has this sort of blue glow. See, so that's how you can tell at a glance whether you scan a gate or not.
Oh, here we go. Here's an interesting one. Kind of. The world itself is. The system, not so much. But we have a an orbital solar array, which will counter the effects of hot and poor light, which is pretty cool. Granted, this one isn't hot, but it would have poor light otherwise. So if you're lucky enough to find a planet in a good system, and a good planet in a good system that happens to have these solar arrays, then you can get some pretty good farming out of them. Granite farming isn't, you know, glamorous, but it's a pretty solid income stream, if I may say so myself. I am something of a farmer myself. This is the last system that we have in our exploration. And so far, aside from that brief moment of excitement, I think that concludes our exploration. So I'm going to go take a look at this last planet down here. And then, assuming there's nothing here, which there probably isn't, we need to rush home because we are out of supplies. <laughs> We're going to be, like, coasting in on fumes. Well, maybe not. Our fuel's okay. It's our supplies that are rough shape. But then I want to kind of retool our fleet a little bit, and I want to do some activities involving our colonies and some of the shenanigans we can get into surrounding them. So yeah, I'm going to see all of you back home in a little bit. I'm going to dump off all of our stuff, go sell some odds and ends, and maybe even see about buying some more ships for us to tinker with. Where the heck is that? gate my goodness or not gate jump point yes yeah, so i will see all of you hopefully hello hello do you have free stuff for me i could use some free stuff right about now no okay i don't want to mess with you because i'm out of supplies it's going to cost more than i get but yes i will see all of you in a little bit All right, folks, slight change of plan. I picked up a mission for a research station that we found a while back. And as I recall, we didn't raid it. We didn't scoop it out because we didn't have any cargo space at the time. I didn't want to waste, you know, whatever we could get from that. And I had forgotten where it was until now. So the hegemony actually just gave us a quest for research station and it is hello over here on the map on the left side let me get out of a storm here but yep it is right over here so i'm gonna do that as a real quick run and we'll take a look and see what we get from that hopefully some good stuff i would like to enhance our colonies a bit today because i also got a notice that our here we go our second colony, Abydos, which is still a money pit, just got to size five. And so it's about time for us to figure out what kind of industry we want to put on here. I'm thinking it's going to be refining because we we could do we could do fuel production because we are getting a little bit of volatiles, and fuel production is generally pretty lucrative I think but it's also got a lot of upkeep and we already have we're already bleeding money on this thing so it might be better to do refining now since we have a lot of income as far as the ore and uh, transmetonic ore goes and so that will boost our output there and then once we get another planet up with more than trace volatiles then we can probably put the fuel production on this planet since it has an atmosphere we can put the what was the the co combine i think is the fuel booster item and then we'll be able to make bank from that so for now yeah, let's go through refining we do have scatter ruins not worth it let's do refining i was saying not worth it to tech mining which is it's a funny industry it doesn't actually generate money it generates stuff and every every month at least until it runs out of stuff to mine it can find you things like blueprints and other odds and ends from 
mining out the old ruins. So, ooh, here we go. Bloodic Path. Oh, okay. So they don't like their being mining and refining. So here's our first taste of Ludic Path activity. We've largely kept them at bay by just not doing things that require a lot of tech. And unfortunately, it seems we've now attracted their ire. And there's going to be a Ludic Path base somewhere in here that's providing them with funding and support for harming our colonies and it's gonna be up to us to find out where it is and destroy it and there are a number of ways to do that now that will then feed into the major events hostile activity here so as you can see we now have a positive number here even though we have military base we oh we have contest wrath too apparently interesting even though we have military base we now have a sort of an attractor factor of 14. So we're going to be slowly ticking this up and getting into the low impact zone here eventually. Now, the Lytic Path base and the other stuff might not exist yet because generally it really only generates bases kind of once things get to a certain point. And I don't think it's there yet, I'm assuming. Hello. Oh, that's great. Sure, we did it for Ismara. What, what is Ismara? In Penelope Star. Okay, I don't really care about that. My friend. Yeah, neat. <laughs> Sheesh. So yeah, let's get out here and let's check out this research station. Hey, there we go. We finally got another level 7 officer. Let's go to these storms and see what they're like. Uh, safe, okay. Hello, level 7 officer. What do you look like? You have ballistic mastery. Oh, you're not bad, actually. You are not bad at all. Ballistic mastery... Missile spec. You're steady. Mm hmm. Actually, you don't belong here. You belong on like a Sunder or something. Yeah, we'll hang on to this person and we'll see if we can slot them in somewhere. I'd kind of like to drop having a uh, a officer on this carrier. I moved her from our condor to this, and I dumped our condor at home. And so, yeah, I think it's time for us to rejigger. I'm not liking the Medusa's performance, for instance. I'd like to maybe get rid of this entirely, and probably this officer, because she's kind of terrible. And yeah, I want to spend some time doing that once I get back. But for now, let's go to the research station. All right, so we have been here before. Not sure why, but the name does ring a bell. And the research station is right up here in the heart of the system, which of course means right next to the star. And there it is. Around we go, and bam. I assume we've already gotten this... Uh, Debris field, yes, okay. All right. Got an 870k and roll the dice. Oh, yes. I Do we have this already? I don't know. We did get a Prometheus blueprint, a heavy burst laser blueprint, and some neat stuff. So even if we already have one of these, it's kind of a nice find still. Let's take this stuff and then the old double tap. And I think we already have a couple of these. This is like number four, I want to say. Okay. Cool. Well, that was actually, I think, worth it. We've already been there, too. So, I'm going to head home for real this time. And we are going to rejigger. 
and then we'll talk about what to do with our colonies and possible expansion into a new colony. Okay, folks, I kind of lied. Accidentally. I'm bringing you back because I wanted to show you something important here that we haven't gotten to cover yet. And so we have found this person with the paper book a few times. And we've been giving them donations to find, or to, I guess, have money to dig deeper and search harder and longer and whatever. And they finally come back to us with some results. Right here, we have two blueprints. I'm going to get to pick one, unfortunately. I'm going to tell you which one we're going to go with. It's going to be this one. And that's because the Legion 14th Battle Fleet Battle Carrier, this blueprint does not exist until you click this button. So if you're looking for a 14th Battle Fleet Legion blueprint, this is the only way that you can print your own is to find this person with the book and feed them money until they don't need it anymore. And then eventually, once they randomly roll to, you know, generate it, then you can get your 14th Fleet Legion. We'll go ahead and take that. Why not? And there you go. So just something in case you are looking for that or don't, you know, you're not familiar enough with the game to know that you can't get it until you talk to that person and get that particular roll of the dice. That is how you get the, whoops, the 14th Fleet Legion blueprint. I want to sell you this junk, not buy it. Anyway, that was all. I just wanted to show you that while I pick up some supplies and gas up here. All right. See you all in a little bit for real this time. Nothing interesting better happen between now and then. Nothing, I say. All right, folks, we are back after quite a while of me thumbing through menus here. And I've decided what we're going to do. And that is we are going to colonize not one, but two planets. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a great abundance of volatiles in our system, or at least no one great source, because we do have this one. This is abundant volatiles. It's not bad. It's two units higher than this. However, we did just get a plasma dynamo, which increases volatiles production by three units on a gas giant. So if we look at our map again here, we'll see that that would bring this to plus two total versus plus one. And also, the gas giant here has a slightly lower hazard rating, which I am really interested in, in having. Now we could, we could colonize this one, and we might colonize it eventually, we might even do both. And we could put the orbital fusion lamp here to reduce the hazard here to 150, which would make this cheaper. It still wouldn't have quite as many volatiles, but we'd also be getting some more regular metals out of it, which isn't bad, but we already have a lot coming out of Abydos over here. So we're going to colonize this world, and I think we're going to hop over to this one, and we'll colonize this as well. It's nothing special, but it'll get us a bit more organics income as well as farmland for food to supply the other colonies we're going to build here. And we're going to have up to five without any penalties. We can have two that we govern and three that are governed by administrators whom we pay. And I don't recall how many we still have, actually. So we have one who is not currently assigned, and we are governing one of our two colonies. So we're going to pick up our second colony, and we're going to have Gilgamesh Kabraken run a second colony. And it doesn't really matter which one, because they don't have any skills, and we don't have any skills related to colonies. So we're just going to do that. And... We have a new planet to name. So I'm going to refer to our previous names and I'll get that out in the next episode. But for now, we're going to call it Big, Big Ball of Gas. Confirm. 
we'll leave that there and we are going to i guess we'll leave the plasma demo here and we will also queue up some mining let's see that will be volatiles now it's going to say that it's going to not produce anything because right now its total would be zero because the colony size gives it a plus one this gives it minus one so it'll be zero so we will end up needing to use our plasma dynamo just to get us some volatiles but that's okay and let's just go ahead and queue up some ground defenses for you know all the ground a gas giant has <laughs> and that's it we can't do anything else for now so that's fine all right we'll come back to that in a few days or months and let's go check out this other here you are arid world and i was mistaken we don't actually have a co-combine so we can't increase the output of our refinery which is unfortunate but hopefully we will do some exploration soon and find one of those. Here we are. So we have our arid world here. And this has some pretty nice stats. And we have another dry world 2. There we go. <laughs> All right, and we're going to queue up farming. We'll queue up ground defenses, and that will be that for now. And, yeah, we'll do hazard pay for you and probably for the other one as well. Let's see. Yeah, it'd be pricey, but I want you to grow, to actually grow. Now, we could also get around hazard pay by having a way station and changing this to a mega port. I don't usually find that to be as effective as just dumping money into it with hazard pay so we'll see how that goes and this one also has some ruins let's see what uh oh it says it has ruins or it looks like it has ruins check it out that's goofy so it has the floaties but no ruins Did I find a bug, Alex? I don't know. Anyway, so that's that for the colonies for now. We'll have to come back in about a couple months and add in the plasma dino. Dimino. Yep, domino. The plasma domino. <laughs> Into our big ball of gas here. You also have floaties, but I don't think you have ruins. No, that's very strange. And yeah, that will be that once we get our plasma dynamo in there. And we'll be well on our way to making some big bucks. And one thing I want to do is, you'll see, if you go into our colonies here, that we have a reduction in access of 20% due to hostilities with other colonies, or other factions. And that's not a huge debuff for like a big colony like, like uh, Larch. But for our smaller ones, it can be an impediment to getting our exports going and even our imports. And so it might be wise for us to at some point leave our commission with Tritachion behind. Because right now we have one, two, three, four potential. Well, three, I guess, because Suspicious will still trade with us. But Hegemony, Persian League, and Syndria will not trade with us. And Light Path and Pirates are kind of always, you know, vengeful. So not much we can do there, but whatever. It would be nice to get that extra accessibility from not having so many enemies. Especially considering that I just went from a very positive relationship with Cinderian Dictat to maximum hostilities. So, yeah. But yeah, I'm going to have to sort of take a look at that because... We need to make sure that we have at least as much income from our colonies as we do sort of general, you know, expenses. 
So if we come into our income here, we can see that we are getting 90,000 per month from TriTac and nowhere near enough. We're 22,000 from our colonies. So combined, the two of those give us 32,000 credits a month, which ain't bad. But right now, this is hurting us. The additional hazard pay will hurt us. And, yep, unfortunate, but that's how it goes. I also need to remember to come in here to the colonies, and you'll see that we now have a management penalty of minus two. That means if we come to Larch, you'll see our stability is now seven because of our management penalty, or mismanagement penalty. So we're going to come over here to, say, Dry World, and we're going to assign Gilgamesh Kabraken to Dry World. Now that will bump his salary up from 250 to 2500 per month, but that is fine. We could go and get one more administrator and install them on a big ball of gas, and then we would have a full maximum 10 stability here at large. That's not really necessary, I don't think. And we're like, oh gosh, we're like three months away from maxing out colony size here, which will turn off the hazard pay. Actually, we could just, eh, we'll leave it on. What'll happen is when this hits maximum size, the hazard pay will turn off because the colony can either grow or shrink at that point. So it will not be doing anything. So the game automatically kills it for you, which is great. And then we'll also get our final industry on here. And then I think in the next episode, I want to do probably some combined exploration and also maybe seeing if we can find what Ludic Path group is annoying or terrorizing Abydos because, oof, ouch, because it would be nice to, one, take care of them, and two, I want to take our ships for a spin. Yeah, it's not bad enough influence to actually create the mission to go find them. But we can talk about what to do about Path or Interest, because I think we are going to generate a lot of path or interest here real soon. But let's take a look at the ships. So rejiggering our fleet, I have removed both of our, well, temporarily removed both of our capital ships, and I might slim it down even further. I want to get rid of the Medusa and probably replace it with something we don't have. Maybe like another another Omen is probably my favorite option. And I also replaced our officer here because they got to level 5. Didn't have the final skill that I wanted, which was target analysis. And so I got a new one who has now been mentored and will gain 6 skill options per level up. But yeah, so there's that. And then the ships that I want to take out with us next time we go out... I want to bring the Paragon and the Onslaught. And I want to show you what I do to build these. The Paragon, I go with the Disco Ball philosophy. And you'll see that basically everything here, except for the Hyper Velocity Driver and this single Antimatter SRM Launcher, is a beam. Beams, 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 beams. And this, I just love this, this build. Let's bring out... Uh, what are you? You're like the same, aren't you? Sure. So, uh, let's take a... Thank you. Very much. Let's take a spin in this guy. And you'll see the range on this thing is insane. Like, it's longer than your screen. Or almost. Or my screen. But what we have going on here is we have two high-intensity layers. These are effectively uh, high explosive weapons combined with two graviton beams for additional anti-shield. We have the hypervelocity drivers to provide some actual hard flux, and then the tachyon lances to just provide loads and loads of EMP damage. And you'll see I left the other missile slots empty. I only keep this one around if you have one, 
this is nice to have as like a bit of a finisher or if there's like a ship that you don't want to have to turn halfway around to annoy or to destroy this is great for launching at those kinds of opponents but let's get up here and here is kind of how i typically use this ship i point the front of the enemy and i just hold down the button and you'll understand soon why i don't usually like piloting this ship because it's just not exciting there's not much enemies can do you're just sort of the inevitable <laughs> marching slowly toward the enemy and bad things happen to them yeah whatever dude and now the special ability of this ship is that it has a quarter shield just like the monitor does and while you're under it you can dump your soft flux while your hard flux slowly increases. And we're just going to do that for a little bit here. And there we go. Fire up our guns again. Now this ship has taken some serious damage and it uh, does not have all of the flux capacity or dissipation it should. So it's a little underperforming right now. But I do find this build just hilarious. Gun. Very well finished. So, let's hop over to the other ship we have. The Onslaught. Now, I got this build from... I think I sort of modified it or adapted it from Grumpy Thumper. I had never thought of putting a Mjolnir. I usually like to put the Hellbore on here because it's very flux efficient. You'll see we just dropped like over 400 flux from this thing. But the Mjolnir is really nice in that it fires quickly and it's a source of EMP damage. Not a ton, but it's really hard to get EMP damage from a ship that only has ballistic weapons, except for these, which are kind of an outlier. So this, I like to do Devastators on the sides for keeping fighters and missiles away. And then the front, I line it with heavy maulers, and I tuck some hypervelocity drivers back here. We've got annihilators for pressure if we need to. I have them on auto fire. I have them in a separate group, normally on auto fire, but I usually turn them off so that I can turn them on when I need them. Because I don't have missile spec, and I don't want to fit in expanded missile racks. I do sometimes do for this, but for like our build for our character build today, and for this overall ship build, I didn't want to do it. In the back, I just have some machine guns for point defense and keeping frigates off our butts, and some flat cannons for additional point defense. Now, this ship is all about these pulse cannons, which is why I built in expanded magazines. These are kind of like the... What are the lasers called? Let's see. On you like the autopulse lasers that we have on our usual flagship here, our Odyssey, the avant-garde, except that they're kind of like low-tech versions in a way, and they only face forward. They deal a bit more damage per hit at 250 versus, I think, 150, and they have regenerating charges just like the autopulse laser. So the expanded magazines being built in will increase the regeneration rate for these charges which is pretty handy so let's take this ship in and i'll show you how this guy fares against a similar enemy now this is kind of similar you'd sort of base toward enemy and drive and hold down the shoot button but with this one there's a bit more management of your flux and sort of being able to know when to take hits on your armor so we're going to actually go ahead and we're going to leave off our annihilators because we want to get this guy's flux up first And we'll take some of these hits on our shield, turn it off when he's not shooting, and you'll see... Oh my goodness, get in here. There we go. You'll see that our flux goes up really quickly, because one, these thermal pulse lasers are really flux hungry, and especially this Mjolnir. This thing uses tons of flux. So you have to be really careful, and you kind of want to usually run with your shields off most of the time unless you're fighting an enemy like this that is very you know tanky and has a lot of firepower we're gonna back off a little bit here 
actually going to actually vent. So we are hurting. But I do have heavy armor, so I'm not super worried about it. We're going to turn on our annihilators here. We're going to get back up in here. There we go. So shoot till our guns are empty. And then we'll start backing off. And we will vent while they think they're safe. And now their flux is still high, so we can press our advantage. Go. I'll let our Mjolnir do its job. There we go. So, one-on-one, -on -one, we took, what, uh, about a quarter of our health? But that's not bad. Normally, you know, you'd be in a formation and wouldn't want to just take this thing head-on. But, you can. Alright, well... I hope you enjoyed the demonstration, and I hope you look forward to seeing these ships in a real battle. I want to use these maybe once or twice, maybe an episode or two, and then we'll bring them back and trade them out for something else. I'd like to sort of skip around here and try out some different ships with you all, so you can get an idea of how they all feel to fly. And we are still missing a few. We don't have a Conquest, for instance. We don't have the Pegasus that the Executor is based off of. We just have the Sindrian version. And we haven't ever really flown, I don't think, much in the way of the Champion or Dominator or even my preferred build of the Aurora. So I might do some more tinkering after the episode and get ready for some more changes coming through here so we can explore as many ships as we can during the course of the series. Anyway, that's going to do it for the episode. I hope you enjoyed. Oops, we have not enough crew. Hope you enjoyed the episode and hope you're looking forward to more adventures out here in space and as always my name is Hasan Kurazar thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one